Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little and I am currently in Barcelona. So far, I've been here for I believe four days, something like that, and I have won no tournaments. <laughs> My first two were turbo events and I just snap busted those, so that was no fun. Um, my second was a 5,000 euro satellite to a 50,000 euro event, and I took 13th when 10th got paid. So that was a little bit unfortunate, but I lost two flips nearing the bubble in spots where the opponents had like four big blinds. Average stack was maybe 15 big blinds. So I lost those two, and then I got short, and I shoved with queen seven suited from the cutoff for like five big blinds into two short stacks in the big blind. But the, but the button woke up with ace queen, and I was out. So. That was unfortunate. I, given the stacks left in the tournament, I could not have folded and realistically got in the money. And everyone, at least at my table, was playing fairly snug. Like they were not trying to bust themselves. So, and I look at the other table and the other table was all good players. So same situation there. So I did not foresee myself getting a seat and I busted. Maybe I could have folded. Well, I could have folded, but whenever you have like right around that five big blind stack, you really do need to look for spots to shove. I'm out here at the Barcelona beach. Maybe not a ton to see out here. There is where people work out in the morning. Let's see if I can find it. Right back, right back there. A lot of guys doing workouts. It's been closed every day. It somehow opened today, so that's cool. I'm gonna go there tomorrow. Um, I just busted the 2000 euro Astralis tournament. Somehow I had four times average. <laughs> I just sort of hung out for a while and then I ended up getting it all in a few times and I won all of them. And then I got it all in a few more times. I lost all of them, so. That was pretty fun. But um, yeah, so now I'm here. Tomorrow is the main event, 5,000 euro European Poker Tour main event. It's quite hot here in Barcelona. I'm a little bit surprised. I don't remember it being so so humid and hot last year, but it is. Um, but yeah, that's that. I got married the other day. I have a wedding ring now. <laughs> you can check out a short video of my wedding at um, one of the podcasts, or one of the, um, the most recent blog posts on the site. So check that out if you care. If not, that's okay too. Uh, there's also a lot of pictures there. But that's that. I'm going to do my best tomorrow. I'm gonna to go get some sleep, try to relax, and tackle the main event. After the main event, there are still a bunch of tournaments. I know there's a 5,000 turbo, a 10,000 euro high roller tournament, which somehow I've cashed in, I think four out of the last four, although I've yet to make a deep run, which is quite frustrating, but same thing. You know, you get all you get in the money, then you lose your hands, and then you're just out. But, um, that's that. I'm going to do my best. We're about to start playing a poker tournament. Here's my table. So I am on the first break, and already I have run a set into a set. It's actually a pretty unfortunate spot. I was against an under-the-gun, very splashy guy who raids, and I defended the big blind of pocket threes, and it came jack, six, three, with two diamonds. I checked, he bet 600, I checked raise to 1700, he made it 4200. And we had um, 30K stacks to start effective. And at that point, I didn't, I, I was not entirely sure he had an overpair or a set. Uh, I definitely thought he had something pretty good, but at the same time, maybe he's just bluffing. And I definitely want to give him the opportunity to bluff and or overvalue ace jack or something like that. So I called, turn was a king. I checked, he bet 61.50, I called. Uh, River was a four of diamonds, so the flush got there. I checked and he bet 6,000. At that point, I was actually kind of sick. Not because I thought he had a flush draw, but because it looked like he was trying to get value from something he perceived as not the nuts. And what is good but not the nuts, and that's like sets. <laughs> so kings, jacks, and sixes, or maybe aces, or I thought perhaps ace king or king jack. And given I was getting whatever it was, six to one pot odds, I decided to call. I was not happy about the river spot though, and he showed pocket kings, so I'm pretty sure if he did not get the set on the turn, I would have won a pot equally as large, and obviously that's the scenario where I win way more than I lose, so I have to be happy with that, even though I did get outdrawn. 
but I still have a little bit less than half my stack. I think I have 13,000 left, so I saved some chips. It's very important in these tournaments that are generally soft to not risk your stack on any individual hand, especially early. And I think that, that hand I just lost is a good example of that. It's a scenario where I win almost all the time, and I do miss value by playing my hand a little bit slowly most of the time, but whenever you save chips, and in this situation I saved 65 big blinds going to 100, 200, it's definitely a good result. So I'm going to go back, continuing to play my best. I think I have a pretty good table draw. Actually, at these EPTs, whenever you buy in, on your buy-in slip it says how you buy in. So it says if you buy in with cash, um, online money, or satellite, if you're a satellite qualifier. And all of the people at my table were either like older guys who bought in with cash or kids who are satellite, satellite qualifiers. So that's good. Um, you don't usually want to see kids buying in with cash because it means they likely have a lot of cash. <laughs> you want to be people satelliting in or you want to see older rich guys at your table. And luckily, that's what I have. So I'm going to continue doing my best. Well, I'm on my way back to my apartment. <laughs> It was still daylight outside, so that means I busted. I um, didn't really get any. I didn't get much going. I went back with thirteen thousand, like I said in the last video. I got up to about sixteen thousand, and then um, someone raised. I three bet with King Ten offsuit. I got four bets, and then jammed on, so I folded. And then two hands later, I got Ace King, and um, maybe not two hands later. Must have been. It must have been about an orbit later, a little bit less than an orbit later. Um, a guy raised cutoff, I three bet, same, like a very similar dynamic. So, um, and I'd been splashing around a bit trying to play pots with a lot of the weaker players. And I three bet him, and he instantly four bet. So it went like um, 525, I made it 1300, and then he snap made it 4500. And I was really hating the spot. Uh, that was one of those situations where whenever you see a guy who is a likely a recreational player, um, like snap, make it 4,500 on you, that's almost always a very strong hand. So I wasn't loving my ace king in that spot, but I don't think I can really fold after putting in 1,300 out of the uh, 15,000 chip stack. But Maybe I could. I don't know. I mean, if you if you my opponent tells me he has something like tens or better and ace king and ace queen suited, it's not like I'm in love, right? And that's probably what I'm looking at. Also, he could have something like ace jack and just be losing his mind, or maybe think that I'm losing my mind. That's the thing. Whenever you have a dynamic where you've been splashing around a decent amount, you have to assume your opponents are going to adjust to some extent, and. The problem is you never really know exactly how much that adjustment is going to be. Sometimes it's going to be a lot, sometimes it's going to be a little, sometimes it's going to be none. So I decided to go with the ace-king and put it in, and obviously called. I expected him to call my shove 100% of the time, or maybe not 100%, but you know, 90, 92% of the time. And he had pocket aces. And I flopped a king, but that was not good enough. I was out. The board actually ran out king, queen, six, six, six. So I had a full house. <laughs> Almost the nuts, but not quite. So um, after that, I did an interview with Sarah Herring of Poker News about my wedding. So that was pretty fun. I'll, I guess I'll link to that if I remember to do that by the time I put this video up. And um, now I'm on the way back to my apartment. There's a Hyper Turbo 2000 Euro tournament tonight at 10 p.m. I'll probably play that. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. there's a 2000 Euro Turbo tournament. And then after that, I believe, is the 10K. So I'm going to try to take it easy, try to enjoy life. I'm going to be working on a new book project, Strategies for Beating Small Stakes Poker Cash Games. I worked on that a little bit this morning. I'll continue working on that for the next few days and just try to remain sane. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> just finished a nice dinner. There's this place behind me, uh, back there somewhere, that will give you an 11 euro meal, which is cheaper than most places out here, I guess, that has a lot of food and it is fantastic. Poker Stars Travel has these coupons and with the coupons you get a sweet deal. So I had that. Um, I'm about to go play the 2000 Euro tournament, but during dinner I was thinking about this hand where I busted yesterday from the 2000 Hyper event. 
and I guess I'll show you guys the casino in the back. They have this weird fish statue thing. You see it right back there. That's probably because all the fish go play in the casino. It looks like a fish. You can't really tell from here. Um, anyway, in my bust out hand, I had about eight starting stacks and a guy went all in for five big blinds. I had 22 big blinds. So a guy went all in for five big blinds from um, middle position. And I had a track offsuit, so of course I went all in for 22 big blinds. Very standard stuff. It folds around to the guy in the big blind who was a good, aggressive looking kid. I did not know him, I just got moved. In this tournament, the stacks were busting very, very fast. It was a hyper turbo event, so blinds went up every 10 minutes and people were shooting their stacks in. <laughs> so he thought forever. And once he started thinking forever, I thought he must have something like nines or ace queen or ace jack. I, I think those are probably right on the cusp of a 22 big blind call off range. And he eventually called pocket eights. And I, I thought it was kind of loose in real time. Maybe he thought I was weak for some reason. Um, I guess for those wondering, my range in that spot would probably be ace 10 or better, king queen, and probably pocket sevens or better. So pocket, pocket ace is not in great shape against that range. And obviously the other, the initial five big blind shover is in fine shape against. But more importantly, we were kind of nearing the bubble. I think there were 40 people left and 27 got in the money. Or 23, 23 got in the money. Something like that. And me and my opponent, the guy who busted me, he had, he won the flip of course. <laughs> me and the guy who busted me both had eight starting stacks, which is quite a lot. When average is five, we have eight, we're in pretty good shape. And I think that's the spot where you really want to not take big flips. I don't think you're going to be able to justify uh, taking, lose, losing a big flip and just being broke compared to having still a, a stack bigger than most everyone else at the table, besides me, who I was across the table from him. So that was a spot where I think that some players just sort of blindly call off there with the eights because, oh, eights are great. But if you think about my range and also you take the tournament considerations into effect, meaning you don't really want to go broke at that point, I think it's a pretty easy fold. So if you ever find yourself in that spot, make the fold, don't make the loose call off. And in order to make that call off, he probably needs to think I have a, a really wide range, probably like ace nine or ace eight, and then probably something like any pair, maybe king, queen, king, jack, and I'm certainly not shoving those. I'm not gonna say I'm in the you know conserve stack situation like he is I, I, whenever I shove because I'm certainly thinking oh I can get this and good for five big blinds but um, you really just do not want to take huge amounts of risk for 22 big blind stacks it's ideally not what you want to do so interestingly enough I am well I'm out of the 2k tournament but it was actually a very similar spot to the one I was just talking about about how I said um, hands like ace queen and pocket eights are probably close folds in spots where it goes raise and shove for 20 big blinds. And this time, I mean, well in the previous hand it was just a flip because I had ace jack and my opponent had um, pocket ace. But today, someone min raised and I went all in for 22 big blinds with ace king offsuit. I'd been shoving a little bit, so maybe my opponent thought I was crazy, but I just had pretty good hands. And uh, someone yet to act, just like instantly put it all in. And I assume my ace king was, you know, fine enough. Ace king's great. But um, yeah, the initial razor folded, and I was against ace queen suited. And I think ace queen suited is probably a close call in that spot. My opponent was just thrilled to get it in. He snap jammed it, <laughs> and um, he ended up making a flush. So I lost that one. I'm out. But I feel fine about it, and it sort of reiterates the point that whenever you are facing a 20 big blind shove, you really do need a very good hand. It's often not a bad idea to make fairly snug folds. I'm not going to say that this opponent should have folded ace-queen suited. I, I think it's probably a close call given I had shoved a decent amount. Um, for what it's worth, I did shove twice earlier. Once I had king-queen suited, the other one I had pocket nines. So, not that my opponents knew that, but obviously if I tell you my range is that strong, ace-queen suited is probably an okay get in, but close, but ace-queen also is just a fold. So, um, anyway, that's that. Tomorrow is a 2,000 euro slow tournament. This starts at 4 p.m. I'm gonna wake up, try to enjoy the morning. I'm probably gonna go swimming in the ocean. I've been doing that most of the mornings, which is always fun. And um, just try to enjoy life. So, I'm here at my last meal in Barcelona. 
Have me a little bit of wine, one glass, exactly, because I have to wake up early in the morning. Um, the trip ended well enough. I played the high roller tournament, and unfortunately, I lost. I got uh, set over setted versus Ole Shimeon, who is a very good, I guess I'd call him tight aggressive, but he's certainly active enough to where I'm never folding a set. Um, it was actually an interesting spot where he raised under the gun, second position called, I called big blind pocket threes, and it came jack six three. I checked, Ole checked, initial guy bet, and I had check raised this guy earlier on a very dry board. And for that reason, I decided to check raise this time. I actually don't love check raising in that spot on Jack 6 3 because it's so hard for me to have anything. But I went ahead and did it. And then Ole re raised to about two thirds of his stack, and he had roughly the same amount that I had. We both had about two starting stacks, so a pretty good amount of chips. And unfortunately, I decided not to fold, and he had pocket jacks. So that was tough. And then the next day, I had the option of. Oh, actually, that didn't bust me, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, at the end of the day, what happened was that left me with about... I don't know how much that left me with. It left me with around two-thirds of the starting stack, and I got pocket queens. I got moved to a new table, and I got... I was dealt in big blind first hand to get pocket queens. Um, early position raises. This guy who, you know, 40-year-old guy, did not know re-raised. I elected to four-bet with the queens, and he put me in the three-better. And I decided not to fold, and he showed me pocket kings. So, yeah, pretty tough. Two tough spots where I'm not really trying to fold too often. And, um, so then the next day I could either re-enter the 10K, or I could play the 2K. And I elected to be disciplined and just play the 2K. The 2K was supposedly a deep stack tournament, but they started us with 25,000 chips at 100, 225 with 30 minute levels. So it wasn't actually a uh, deep stack tournament. It was actually pretty quick. But um, somehow I ended up doing well. I had a great, I had really just great tables throughout. Really the whole tournament was great throughout. And I ended up taking fourth place, which I was thoroughly happy with. I definitely am fine with that. Process. And um, so yeah, all in all, I, I was happy with that. I, I didn't have much going for me. At, once we got to the final table, at the start of the day, I actually won a flip versus Stevie444. And um, someone raised and I shoved 20 big blinds, and Stevie cold called. And I was like, oh, well, this is bad. Because <laughs> you get cold called when you have pocket eights, you're never happy. But Stevie had uh, ace king, so that was good. I won that. Then I lost. A guy jammed 12 big blinds. I called pocket tens. He had nine eight. I lost that one. <laughs> um, it was kind of funny. I had 10 of hearts, 10 of diamonds, and he had 9, 8 of diamonds. He's like, oh, you even have my suit covered. And then flop comes 9, 3, 2. I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and he got the 8 on the river. Then what else happened? I won another one, and I lost another one. I won queen 10 suited versus king queen suited, which was lucky, although that was for only six big blinds. But then I won, uh, lost, I turned around and lost um, ace king to king queen. So lots of swings. This was all then like the first orbit. <laughs> And then after that, I chilled out. I didn't really get any more cards. And I stole quite a few pots, actually. I was pretty happy with my pot stealing abilities for <laughs> this day. And I'm probably going to do a webinar on that. I'm going to be doing a live webinar sometime in September. And I don't see how I cannot go over all these situations that I blatantly stole the pots. Oh, look, there are people behind me. Hello, people. <laughs> so um, I was pretty happy with that. I, I was. I was glad with the way I played. I really did not have many spots, and I got away stealing way more than my fair share. So all in all, I was happy with that. Um, after that, I played a 2K turbo. I doubled up once with queens versus fours, and then I lost ace-king versus um, eights. So another flip. So all in all, lots of all-ins, which is how it goes in these turbo tournaments. And uh, that's that. So like I said, I will be doing a webinar going over this entire Spain trip. I did a lot of things right and a lot of things wrong on this trip. I was never on my sleep schedule the entire time. And that's not good. I, I definitely was not focusing to the best of my ability. I, like last night, I slept two hours. Uh, we got home at, or I got home at one, and then stayed up till three, slept two hours, woke up at five, <laughs> woke up and went swimming, went and had breakfast, just piddled around until it was time to go play. I just could not fall asleep. It was brutal. So that was not good. I'm going to discuss 
that a little bit in the webinar and also how to deal with just running bad because I really did run bad in both the main event and the high roll and a lot of the other tournaments. And you have to be able to stay sane and come back and play your best and that's what I did in the 2K. I was very happy with really my play throughout the series. I feel like I probably wasn't picking up on as many spots as I should have just because I was tired and whenever you are tired you will miss out on spots. But And I guess if you told me I'd come out here and take a fourth place in something I'd sign, I ended up losing a little bit of money, but that's okay. All in all, I'm happy with it, and yeah, that's that.